Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining in the Hawkeye webinar, part two of two. Today, we'll just recap what Hawkeye is and some benefits that you'll get from Hawkeye. We'll visit some best practices and maintenance when working with Hawkeye. We'll go through the initial setup in the Hawkeye Wizard. We will go through some diagnostics and troubleshooting whenever you're working with Hawkeye. And we will finish things out with some unlocks. How to get HD and the ISO sectional control going on your new Hawkeye system. So what is Hawkeye? Hawkeye provides you accurate application with consistent spray pattern and droplet size at every nozzle while reducing drift. So this eliminates any issues when you're speeding up and slowing down. It's going to be consistent through that whole speed range. Along with that, you get a simple installation, easy setup and calibration with the Hawkeye system as well. So why Raven instead of any other competitors out there? Uh, first off, when you upgrade your Hawkeye system to Hawkeye HD, there's no replacing hardware. It's just a simple unlock that you type in the monitor. We give you individual valve diagnostics that you can get on screen at any time during application. Simplified cabling, we'll go over that in a bit. It's one run of cable from the ECU all the way out to the boom tip. Turn compensation is a standard feature. Again, you buy Hawkeye, you get turn compensation with it. No upgrades there. There's one controller in the cab. It's an ISO VT system, so any VT can run Hawkeye. All you need is Hawkeye, and then if there's any additional unlocks from the OEM of the VT, you would need those as well. And cost. Um, you know, again, there's no replacing hardware. You, you buy Hawkeye up front. There's no additional costs replacing anything in the future. So that system integration there, the, the one display for product control and pressure in sectional control, that just simplifies things. No need for two displays in the cab to control your product. The one ECU is controlling rate and pressure and also sectional control. That's the main Hawkeye ECU. And you get the ability to switch between Hawkeye and the other various modes. Uh, there's one drop down selection that you can visit that will display all five. Anytime before you enter the job, you can select which one you want to be applying in at that particular time. It's accurate as applied mapping. There's that one Hawkeye ECU is registering all the information and reporting it back to the VT. No need for two rate control modules or, or two modules controlling the system. And again, it's ISO compatible, so any VT can operate the system. Simple installation here. Uh, as you see on the top of your screen there, the main Hawkeye ECU cable comes out to the bottom and you have a left and right main harness. We picture the right main harness on the bottom there. You have one run from the center of the machine all the way out to the boom tips. And every nozzle is what we call daisy chained along the way. So there's no additional need for any control modules or anything as you go to the boom tip. Some of the Hawkeye supported nozzles, we work with the three main manufacturers of nozzle tips, T-Jet, Hypro A-Reg, and Wilger there. So pretty much any system out there, we can attach our nozzles to their nozzle valves and get the system to control accurately. Some of the Hawkeye base system features, we'll cover these quickly here. Again, turn compensation, it's a standard feature. It just creates consistent spray pattern from the inside to the outside of the boom while going around corners. The individual valve diagnostics, this is where you'd read the duty cycle of the nozzle, the temperatures of the nozzle, anything that that nozzle can report. There's about 10 different items that would be reporting at all times. On the right there, on the center of your run screen, there's a required travel speed range. So we tell you what the optimal speed range is based on your flow rates and pressures and nozzle tip selection. And that would alarm you anytime you get below or above that speed range. We also indicate on those dials on the center of your screen that there is an optimum pressure range and an optimum flow rate range that we would be needing to run in. And again, we'd alarm you at any time that you exceed those ranges. Just to make things a little easier for you guys, there are two presets for both rate and pressure. These are operator defined. And along with that, you get a rate bump and a pressure bump. So the two rate presets allow for those larger jumps where the rate bumps allow for those smaller incremental changes while you're operating your system. 
In the center of the screen there, that's the main Hawkeye ECU. That's what does all the pressure and product control and also sectional control for your system. On the right there, that's the Viper 4 pictured with the VT run screen. Um, this is one display in the cab that controls everything for your Hawkeye system. Virtual sections. Uh, there are three main section control modes that you can run with Hawkeye. Hawkeye can run in your, your basic mode, which is, is if you have seven boom valves, you will have seven sections with Hawkeye. If you want to run in virtual sections, again, this is no upgrade. Uh, it's included on every Hawkeye system. We basically split however many boom valves you have into virtual sections. So in the picture here, you see at the top seven boom sections, we split those into two. We create 14 boom sections. We go up to 16 total. So we split the outside section one more time. So this just creates a little better resolution, a little better sectional control over the whole system. Uh, so the outside two nozzles are gonna be in their own virtual sections. And as you get to the middle there, you see there are four nozzles in the two center sections. This is something that the Hawkeye Wizard does for you. This is not user defined. We just take all the hassle out of it for you and, and Hawkeye does everything it needs to do by itself. As you see on the bottom left there, for any older systems out there that want to take advantage of this feature, there is some minimum Hawkeye ECU software required as well as the Viper 4 Raven operating system software, minimum of 2.2 or above. Any new Hawkeye system, any new Viper 4 going out today would have these software versions or higher on them already. As I mentioned in a prior Hawkeye webinar, we have wheel tracks. It's a base feature of Hawkeye. This is how you set the Hawkeye wheel tracks. As you see on the left, upper left corner of your screen, there's that nozzle diagnostics icon. And on your display in the machine, that'll be on the soft key on the right side. You just press that. That'll bring up the top section of the Hawkeye nozzle diagnostic screen. In the top left corner of that, we can press that drop down and bring up the individual nozzle diagnostics. That is where you can filter through and select the two nozzles that you want to be included for wheel tracks. Check the box, as you see on the bottom slide there. And then you can set the offset duty cycle. So we can set two nozzles up to 30% each. So you see here I have nozzle one checked and a 30% duty cycle increase for that particular nozzle. It just takes the average of the two nozzles beside it and increases it up to 30%. And then to reset those wheel tracks, you hit the gears on your soft keys, you have to page over there, and then there's that icon on the top right of your VT window. Hawkeye HD, this is your individual nozzle shutoff, and this is just upgraded with a software unlock. There is a, a temporary unlock that you can get if you want to try it. You just have to talk to your Raven dealer to get that. Again, there are some minimum software requirements for the Raven operating system as well as the Hawkeye ECU to have the feature of Hawkeye HD. And we can take a look at Hawkeye HD in motion here. We got a machine with a video that we can display for you. As you can see here, we're coming into some point rows. We're gonna be getting that overlap. You have your boom indicator right below your vehicle arrow. And you see that slider basically goes from full green and all those nozzles that are shutting off are on the right side showing up red. And we apply accurate rate based on how many nozzles are applying or how many nozzles are on. And we also report that particular information. We don't report based on boom valves unless you're in basic section control mode. But anytime when you're in Hawkeye HD, we do all of our reporting based on how many nozzles are on at that particular time. Just to recap a few items here with Hawkeye HD mapping. Again, all of those individual nozzles in the video they were shutting off from the right tip going left, they paint based on how many nozzles are on. So all of the information, rate, coverage, your as applied maps all reflect how many nozzles were on at that particular time. Moving on to some best practices here as far as coverage and tip size selection. Anytime that you're applying with Hawkeye, based on what type of tip you have, if it's an 80 or 110 degree spray tip, 
there is a minimum recommendation as far as the spray height. So we recommend at an 80 degree spray tip to be applying at a minimum spray height of 36 inches. And again, 110 degrees would be 21 inches. And this is to minimize the amount of vertical or horizontal banding. When you spray with Hawkeye or any pulse width modulated system, we need good coverage from those nozzles because they're always pulsing on and off. And you see in the picture here, it's an alternating pattern. So every other nozzle you see in the darker shaded area will be on at one time. And then the lighter area, lighter shaded area will be off anytime the darker area is on. So they're, they're an alternating pattern. So that minimum spray height will decrease the amount of skips when those nozzles are pulsing. In the center of your screen here, you see a speed range chart and this would be provided by any nozzle tip manufacturer. It just gives you your gallons per acre target rate at, you know, your given pressure and your given flow rate. And on the left here, you see a size three tip. When we're sizing these tips, we want to avoid any duty cycles less than 25%. Again, just to minimize those skips in the field. And we want to avoid any speed ranges on the bottom third or top third of our speed range here that you see in the middle of your screen. When we're sizing these tips, we want to shoot for a 70% duty cycle. So just to keep out of those minimum and maximum speed ranges, a 75% 70 duty cycle would be optimum to shoot for. Again, the uh, tip manufacturer would be the ones to, to verify all of this information. They would have more accurate information regarding each particular tip they make. Some maintenance schedule for your Hawkeye system. We recommend 500 hours uh, to replace all the O-rings in the system. The O-rings are made out of Viton, not EPDM. Viton, we found, has a lot better chemical resistance. Depending on how often you run your system, what the duty cycle is, that 500 hours may need to be adjusted slightly, but 500 hours is what we found out to work the best. As you see here, there's a plunger that has a Viton seal in it as well. On another slide here, we'll take a look at a plunger that would need replacing, but that would be another wear item to keep in mind. Hawkeye NCV maintenance. This is just an exploded diagram of what the Hawkeye nozzle would look like if you took it apart. There's a valve body removal tool, as you see on the bottom right. You can use that with a ratcheting wrench and take off that stainless steel valve body number four in the picture and that would expose the o-ring and the plunger assembly inside so you can take a look if anything is needing replacing at any time all of these items here are dependent on the particular manufacturer whether it's t-jet hyper or wilger they are all particular to those so there's different part numbers needed for each this is a picture here of the plunger assembly as you see on the left that one's been worn quite significantly. Anytime the plunger assembly would look like this on the left side, you might get some leaking. You might not be applying as accurately as you could. The one on the right, that one's a lot better. That one's a brand new one that you'd be needing to replace in your system. So we have Hawkeye. We purchased it. We put it on. There are a few things that you need to take into account when starting up the system for the first time. It's always good to do a pre-run system check. Uh, you can flush out your booms just to eliminate any debris, anything that's going to clog those tips. Uh, one thing that you can do to do that boom flush is set the Hawkeye system in a manual mode. You can increase the pump PWM and nozzle PWM up to 50% or whatever you desire. And you can turn the boom master switch and the boom switch and the master switch on. At that time, you can go back, take a look at the boom, make sure none of the nozzle tips are plugged, make sure everything is functioning as it should. This is the information that's required on the Hawkeye Wizard. Just some basic information as far as the number of nozzles, the nozzle spacing, tip size, all the way over to your boom pressure and, and valve and meter calibration numbers. Uh, you also need to type in a target rate and a target pressure. And this is all information that's used to create the boom setup and also create that speed range that I mentioned earlier. And right now we'll take a look at how to set up the wizard and how to set up the machine profile on an actual Viper 4.
So here we are in the Viper 4. The first thing that we have to do is create a machine configuration when you start up a brand new setup. So we'll name this one test. If you don't have a machine already in your garage, we'll have to create a brand new one. So we'll go to the top and click that blue plus. And in this scenario, we'll just select a generic self-propelled machine. And we'll name it demo. If you do have a custom machine, we can select that. Otherwise, we can go in here and your machine may be in our machine database. You can go in here and, and verify if it is or not. There are several machines here on your list that you see. In this case, we're just gonna create a custom sprayer. So we'll leave it exactly how it is. Here you can type in all the machine information name. We'll go to the second tab. And here you can type in the GPS measurements. These will have to be measured and customized for the machine that we currently have. In this scenario, since it's a demo machine, we're just gonna leave them all for zero for easy numbers. In a normal machine, you would go through here and create a boom setup with ISO and our Hawkeye machines. At this point in the process, we leave this blank. We'll go through the Hawkeye wizard now and add this in later. So right now we'll have to enter the Hawkeye wizard. We'll go to the VT tab. And the first screen that comes up is the nozzle setup screen. This will tell you the total number of nozzles and the number that is on the left side. In this case, we'll have to change that number. The applicator type, we have several to pick from. We have a sprayer and an applicator. The applicators are only used for nitrogen toolbars. In this case, we'll have a generic sprayer. The nozzle spacing in this scenario will be 20 inches. And the tip size will be 04s for the main NCV tip and 08 tip size for the bypass tip. Some machines may not have a bypass tip size. If you do not, we can leave it blank. At this point in the process, it will begin the auto indexing. It'll start at the left inside and work its way out and then continue on from the right inside and work its way out as well. We'll come to the fence row setup. Some machines may or may not have fence rows. In this case, we do not, so we'll leave that blank. If you did, you would put a check mark here. You can enable on-screen buttons if you would like, or if there's physical switches in the machine, you would assign the fence row switch to the left and the right side. Here we'll have the section set up, and this will need to be the number of physical boom valves on the machine. Keep in mind we mentioned that we do have virtual sections and individual nozzle control. That doesn't matter at this point. We'll still need to set it up for physical boom valves. In this case, we have three. So the section width for each one of those will be 60 inches, since we have three nozzles for each section. Our boom offset will be negative 72 inches. If we have questions where to measure for the boom offset, we can click the question mark. In this case, we'll measure from the rear axle to the center of the boom. At this point in the calibration wizard, we come to the switched mapping. Most of the time, section one will be switch one, section two, switch two, and section three, switch three. In some cases though, that may not match up perfectly. So we'll have to figure that out and type in what section switch applies to what boom valve. Boom pressure calibration. Here we have the option for zero to 250 PSI zero to 150 PSI, or we can type in a blank number here and add a custom range later. We'll need to know the millivolt per PSI range for the transducer we're using. Valve calibration, we need to tell it what valve type we have. In most scenarios for all self-propelled machines, we'll select a PWM valve control. The meter calibration number will be needed to type in here. This will be typically the number of pulses per 10 gallons. In this case, it's 1,440. Target rate, even though we may not know what the target rate is going to be in normal operation, 
we still need to type in a value. In this case, it will be 10 gallons per acre. And also a target pressure. At this point, when we get through the calibration wizard, remember we need to go back in and import the boom into our machine. We'll go up here and click on the node in the gears, and then the machine on the top center of your page. The third tab at the top, and then hit the plus in the center. This will pre-populate the boom. Notice how we had three boom valves that we set up during the wizard. Virtual sections will automatically split the boom into the number of sections up to 16. And here we only have nine sections because we have nine total nozzle control valves. After we import the boom, there are a few more settings that we need to double check just to make things a little easier for the operator. We'll go down back to the VT. And notice we have zeros in here for our two target rates. We'll have to pre-populate all of the presets. Hit the gears, and then preset settings in the center of your page. This is where you'd want to type in both the rate presets, the pressure presets, the rate delta, and pressure deltas. Lastly, you want to check that box at the bottom, which says gauges toggle quick key selection. What that check mark at the bottom will do, it will allow you to press the pressure and rate gauge. And if you notice on the right side of your screen, that will toggle between the pressure presets and the pressure deltas, and also the rate presets and the rate deltas. And by delta, that means the preset rate bump or pressure bump that we previously typed in. So now we've got Hawkeye set up, and what happens if something goes wrong? There's a lot of diagnostics and troubleshooting that we can do. If there's any questions while you're going through the Hawkeye wizard or while you're navigating through the screens of Hawkeye, you can take a look at those question marks. This will provide any information as far as the minimum nozzle PWM, what that value actually does and, and what it means, how it's going to affect Hawkeye. Just click on the information screen and find out more. The individual nozzle diagnostics here, this would be great to use when you're troubleshooting. You can hit the soft key on the right side with that little diagnostic symbol. That'll bring up the top section of your nozzle diagnostic screen. Drop that down and you can find information about nozzle duty cycle, the estimated flow rate for that particular nozzle, temperatures, part numbers, software versions, etc. I like to go through, start on this screen, find out if there is a diagnostic troubleshooting code up, find out what particular nozzle it's affecting. Is it affecting the system as a whole or is it affecting one particular nozzle? As you can see here on the nozzle one, it's got that green indicator and that will tell you if it's in a caution state, a critical state, or if the system's operating normal. Diagnostic colors here again, normal, caution, critical, and not calibrated. This would show for the system as a whole, as well as each individual nozzle. The diagnostic troubleshooting codes themselves. Once we access the DTC list, you can access that by pressing the little bell icon on the center of your screen. There are two main sections of the DTC list. At the top of the section, these are the active codes. This is what's currently happening. You know, if there's a, a speed range that's not being met, if there's a nozzle that went offline, this is where that would show up. At the bottom there, that's the inactive code. If you've had a history of nozzles coming offline or an error code that's been popping up continuously, this would be a good time to check what the history of the system is. Is there a commonality between those codes? And at the bottom there, there's always a brief description of what that code means. You can look up these codes in the operating manual that you get with every Hawkeye system, and it also gives you that brief description to go along with it. Again, I like to look at the DTC code and then move on if there's any troubleshooting that's needed. Here's a, an excerpt out of the manual. You have the codes on the left, a brief description of what the code is, and recommended actions to take as far as troubleshooting. So. Take a look at the manual. There's a lot of good information in there. Some codes that might show up again are off rate percent, 
off pressure if there's a, a flow rate that's not being met at any particular time. The NCV troubleshooting, we have LED indicators that are on each individual nozzle. Some of these LED indicators may be flashing a solid color, maybe alternating between two different colors, or it may just be one solid color. And once you verify the DTC code, you can come and double check on the actual nozzle, what is the LED color? Does that give us any more indication of what the issue may be? Some more NCV troubleshooting here. This will be the connection pinout for every single nozzle on the system. We have a common chassis power and chassis ground. There's your CAN high and CAN low, as well as a switched in and a switched out voltage. Now I mentioned earlier this system is what we call daisy chained from the inside out. On the indexing, it starts with the left inside and works to the left outside and then continues with the right inside and works right outside. And if that indexing stops at any particular time, you can come in here and test some voltages. In that daisy chain, how that works is the inside nozzle needs that three volt switched in power. Once that nozzle turns on, it provides that switched in power to the next nozzle and so forth. So there might be one of those voltages, one of those wires that are not making good connection that are causing that switched in and switched out voltage not to be passed on to the next nozzle in line. One more thing to note with the NCV troubleshooting here is anytime the LED indicator is not on and the system's powered up, there's really only two items that need to be verified. Do we have constant power and ground between pins one and six? And are we getting that switched in voltage? Those are the two things that we need to have the LED indicator light up at all. ECU diagnostics, we have some good ECU diagnostics here. If the ECU is getting voltage, we can verify what the duty cycle is of the pump through this screen. The flow pulses would tell us if the flow meter is sending back any information, any signals, if that is working. And we can also get a quick access to the DTC list from this particular screen. One thing that we can do while troubleshooting here with the Hawkeye system is resetting defaults. This will allow the system to start over and recalibrate. This is good for going through the wizard and seeing if there is a pressure transducer connected, let's say, or if the boom sense node is not being detected. It'll come up with an error code and it will not allow you to continue if any of those items are not present. One other thing that you can do is if the speed range is not showing up on your screen, remember I said that the wizard with the flow rate and pressure targets, that's what actually calculates that speed range for us. So again, some things to double check and some things that can be corrected by resetting defaults. If you don't need to reset defaults all the way, if you just need to recalibrate the NCVs, this will go through the indexing on the Hawkeye system. This will basically skip over any pressure transducers, any boom setup configuration, and just go to the nozzle indexing if you're getting any nozzle calibration issues. The ISO sectional control unlock, this is something that's needed for Viper 4s only. You automatically get 20 hours anytime you buy a brand new Hawkeye system or a new Viper 4, but there is also a permanent unlock that's needed. This would have to be a purchase unlock through a Raven dealer. And some things to double check here, if you're operating the system and your booms do not turn off while you're in a job, the temporary time may have run out. Or if you get an alarm with an ISO sectional control warning, that's another indicator that the 20 job hours of temporary time have run out. It's time to get that permanent code. This code can be entered in if you press on the administrator tab of the Viper 4 and go to system manager. At the next screen there, you'll see the unlocked features on the center. And then at the bottom, you'll see that temporary time if you have that 20 hours that are on there for the demo unlock. Moving on from the ISO sectional control unlock, we have the Hawkeye HD unlock. That's the only other unlock that we have with this system. There is a one-time demo unlock that you can get from your local Raven dealer. Otherwise, if you want to purchase the permanent unlock, all we need is the part number and serial number off of the Hawkeye ECU. That can be found on the system information screen 
or by looking on the serial number tag on the hardware itself. You can hit the soft key gears on the right side of your VT window, and at the bottom of the next screen, you see that key icon. That is where you type in that code. So to do any updates with the Hawkeye system, previously with any Raven system, you could do the updates via USB drive, and that's still the case with the Viper 4, but with the Hawkeye system, we do need a Raven service tool to perform these updates, and the part number is listed on your screen. What this is, is a tool that hooks up to your laptop computer and has a special program that we can update the system with. Along with the programming cable for the Hawkeye ECU, we have additional programming cables and diagnostic cables located on ravenhelp.com under the public knowledge base section. And we'll take a look at that right here. As you can see here, uh, we're at ravenhelp.com and right here is that knowledge base articles link that I talked about. Once you click on that, you'll bring up another tab. And I've already searched for Hawkeye diagnostic cables and this will just bring up a lot of information as far as what cables we offer for Hawkeye nozzle diagnostics or overall system diagnostics. It will give a brief description of what the cable is, where to use it, how to use it, and what its abilities are to test the system. A lot of these cables we can test voltages and find out what exactly is going on in the system. Once we get to the bottom, there are several update or programming cables that 157 NCV programming cable we can use to program a nozzle off of the typical Hawkeye setup off of the machine, as well as that 230 Hawkeye ECU programming cable where we can use that and update any Hawkeye ECU off of the chassis. All of these cables, the update cables, are used in conjunction with the Raven service tool in that CAN Power T kit anytime when you're not on the machine updating. 